I'm here through the Green Initiative um, as an environment volunteer trying to you know, instill and pass along various you know, you know, eco-conscious practices and, and, and various, anything environmentally related while I'm down here um, serving in Jamaica for the two year period that I am. Um, I'm back, I said I'm here on behalf of EcoDEC, which is the Year Within Community Development Action Committee. Um, it, be, it started back in 1991 through the um, National Council on Drug Abuse, which started a bunch of Kodaks around Jamaica. Um, and Year Within was one of the pilot programs. And so, it actually, coincidentally, we are celebrating our 20th anniversary uh, beginning this month of July. So, for the next year or so, um, we'll probably have a bunch of events um, planned for us to celebrate our 20th anniversary. Um, as a community-based organization, EcoDAC is the umbrella organization for all these smaller organizations throughout um, Ewerton. Um, one of those being the Ewerton Farmers and Watershed Cooperative, which is responsible for the reforestation of Mount Roster. Um, Mr. Brian Perry over there, he is the vice chairman of that organization. There is the Ewerton JBI Wendalco Joint Community Council, um, which meets, meets a lot of Wendalco because it's a bauxite community. And coincidentally, again, Mr. Brian Perry, the chairman of that organization, he's a very active individual, and also consultative committee and any other very small things around Everton. Um, one of the main projects uh, that I've been doing, um, not environmentally related, but more youth development, is the Life Skills Center program, which has you know been active for the past few years, you know, dealing with marginalized youth um, and trying to uh, bring them up through the Jamaica Lifelong Learning Program up to you know a ninth grade level to help them continue on because the normal education system. So easy for them. Um, we we entered in this competition because you know we're, we're a community organization, but you know we have limited funding, you know, and just you need the, you need the plan for the future, not only in the short term but in the long term. So you know the, the Jamaica's environment is one of the you know it, is one of the Jamaica's best assets down here. So you need to take care of it. We have one world um, that we all share, and if we don't take the time to you know, you know we keep it for future generations, then you know it's, it's foolish. Um, you know, and as, as again, as a limited budget, but still, we're very passionate about what we do. Um, so even though we have one of the one of the things that we did is we did benches that we got from parish council, and we took old pipes on um, that were for a fence posts that were, that were in the community center. Um, you know, cut them in, in smaller pieces and made a protection barrier because these benches are along the main highway, filled them with cement. So now people sitting on those don't have to worry about cars, and perhaps getting them and saving there. So taking reusing. You know, what we had around there, not on a limited budget, so you know, have to go out and purchase it. And, and actually, the, the, I think also coming to the fact that things happen for a reason. Like, uh, we didn't know we did not, we're honorable mention, we did not win anything, but we it only, I got the Sunday paper the week before, the 27th of May, this, this um, you know, entries were due. I bought the Sunday paper. I looked through it all, I read through the Sunday Gleaner, but then, you know, I didn't see the, the advertisement from Scotiabank that entered this competition. It was only two days later when I happened to reread through the paper and I happened to notice this, you know, had a page asking, you know, enter this green competition as an environment volunteer and just knowing what we had done around the community, you know, I thought, well, this is a great opportunity um, for us there. So, I mean, you know, if I didn't look back at that, I wouldn't be sitting here, you know, in the company of Mr. Bowen and Scotia Bay. Um, and also, um, as a peaceful volunteer, we're not, we're here, so we're a grassroots development organization, so we work people to people with. You know, and without working with Mr. Perry to put the entry together, I don't think it would have both been as bolstered as good as it was. You know, it's not me coming from another country bringing stuff here, but working with somebody to help uplift the community as it is. Um, so, in, 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 in the future, um, we like uh, I guess a lot of things we did. I guess to talk about things we did for it. Um, we through Protect the Environment Trust back in October, I started to make contact with Ms. Dana Parchment. And we began, began recycling there, and we've had one pickup of um, plastic from there, and we're continuing to do so right now. Um, we had the reforestation up on Mount Roster um, through the, the farmers group. There is Rio Tinto Alcan is the company that is remediating uh, a lake, a mud lake uh, up in Mount Roster, which is very basic. Um, and so we are active. I, I've actually and Mr. Perry been on tour, on a tour. And we're actively informed of what is happening up there, and also even in our schools. I mentioned our entry that. Uh, there was a trash to camp, com trash to cash uh, competition through Rada, which actually a girl from Mount Roster Infant Primary School won the, the, the Parish Prize in St. Catherine and went on to national identity. Um, so, you know, from all, all aspects, you know, we had things going on. In the future, we look to, um, you know, look to alternative sources of energy. Um, uh, the solar thing, I was very, you know, 
surprised and amazed by what I saw here in the, in the short little video. But you know, we have a, we have a computer uh, um, community access point which has computer stuff, internet access, but the light bill is, is, is not sustainable for us to pay that and have people come. So we'd like to look for possible sources to help get solar panels and solar energy. So then, you know, we basically can then negate the light bill that we have. Um, and then with the plastic, um, you know, we need to, when, you, when you're dealing with an issue, like if, as far as medically, if you're trying to tackle it, if you're just, you're just treating a condition, it doesn't get rid of it completely. If, you, if we collect up and pick up the plastic every day from somebody else, you're picking up somebody else's um, trash, but they're going to continue to do it. But if you do behavior change outreach and you try to find out why, why that person puts it down, you're tackling it, and that's more curing the, 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 the problem more, more than just treating it. Um, so we'd like to do some behavior change outreach in order to fully tackle and try to cure it. You know, uh, people uh, they treat the environment. And we also are in the process of developing a website um, at ecodacjm.com so we can you know, get awareness of ecodac and, and just some general public relations with people around. So in conclusion, I want to thank Mr. Bowen, uh, Scotia Bank, and everybody here for inviting us here. <coughs> Um, you know, one thing I may want to say, uh, you know, say, thank you, Dr. Gautana. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, a suggestion, you know, you know, we're talking about the green thing here. Well, apparently, we did not need a microphone today, um, so perhaps you can save your life. But, Mr. Bowen, I suggest perhaps you don't need to set up.